Hi mums, welcome to part one of how to write your birth plan. I'm Lynn JT and today we're going to cover location. Where is the best place for you to give birth to your baby? We're going to go through all the pros and cons of home birthing, hospital and midwife led centers. So before we dive into the nitty gritty, I want to show you a downloadable template that I have for you. What you see here is a Word document of my very own birth plan, the same one that I used myself. Now it's a modified version from what you can download from the NHS, but I found this layout really helpful. It's much clearer and simplistic. Um, and I've put in first, second and third choices because your birth plan should be flexible. Now, some people say that it's hardly worth doing a birth plan because things never go to plan and you know, you forget everything and no one looks at it. And I completely disagree. I think the whole point of writing a birth plan is not to have a rigid set of conditions that you want met. It's actually about educating yourself around all your birthing options. And the more you are informed, the more educated your choices are, the more confident you're going to feel about any change of circumstances on the big day. You can see there are many things that we have to go through. Where do I want to give birth? Who do I want with me? Um, companions during interventions, if you need any, such as forceps, ventu, C-section, what are all of these? What birthing equipment can I actually bring with me? And what is available to borrow? Then the big one, pain relief. What are we going to be doing about all that? Um, monitoring during labor and what birthing positions and activities should I be considering? What is an episiotomy? Why do we need skin to skin contact? Um, cord clamping, things that have changed uh, a lot. Um, a lot of protocols are changing and people's awareness of all these new things, uh, new concepts around birthing the placenta, feeding baby and the first medical choices you make for baby uh, are all evolving. So this will keep you up to date with everything. Now I've made this into a Word document so you can see you can type in as much as you want and make the squares bigger to match your needs. Um, everything goes in the first choice and then your second and third choice. You can change everything around. You can add a new column if you want um, add to make something like uh, comments or notes, uh, something, anything you want. Anyway, you can download this. The link is in the comments box. And I want you to follow along and write these up as we go. Great, so now you've got your template, you can follow along really easily. Let's dive straight into the first row, location. And to make it super, super crystal clear on your options, take a look at this table. So let's have a look at the options you have when you're giving birth at home in the midwife led center or the OU obstetric unit, so in hospital. So what do we have? If you think you're gonna want some gas and air, you can have that in all places. You can have absolutely have that at home. If you're thinking of using your TENS machine, and that's important to you, you can also take that anywhere with you, wherever you go or transfer to or from. The only thing is you can't take it into a birthing pool with you, of course, because it's electric. Now, if you're thinking that you might want to use pethidine, then you can absolutely use that at the hospital. It will be a yes or no in certain midwife-led centers, but mainly yes. And you can even have that at home. Uh, all you have to do is get your GP to to prescribe it so that it's already stocked there at home and ready for the midwife to administer for you should you need it at home. However, for epidurals, obviously you're not gonna have that facility at home or the midwife-led center, but you will have that at hospital. Now, we're going to uh, discuss transferring from home to hospital um, in just a minute. A very interesting fact there, so hold on before you just assume that you definitely want to be uh, at hospital. Now, one-to-one -one contact, you will absolutely get that at home. You're gonna have all the attention on you every second that you need, um, someone will be there just for you. However, in the midwife-led center, you'll, they'll do rounds and you will be seen but on a, on a regular basis, but more of like a 15, 20 minute um, 
lapse between reviews, uh, that's most of the time, obviously it varies between centres, and you definitely won't be getting one-to-one on, um, on the wards in hospital though. So your privacy levels are maximal at home. You, 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 you do get more privacy in the midwife-led centre than at hospital, but obviously the most is still at home. All your food, your creature comforts at home as well, um, which you, you can bring in some, quite a lot, into midwife-led centres actually, but still it's not going to be quite the same as home and definitely won't have the space um, or the, the, the they won't allow you to bring in as much stuff. There just isn't the space for it in on the wards. Now, fathers, of course, they're going to be there for you at home and in the midwife-led uh, center, but on the wards, they do get sent home at night. And when a baby's most usually born, it does tend to be at night um, that they come for very good reasons as well, because you're, you're calm and peaceful. Uh, birthing pools, you're going to get that in the midwife-led center. Most of them uh, have uh, three or four, sometimes more. Obstetric units are now seeing some birthing pools being installed, but they're very few, so you'll be lucky if you have one there. Just check with your local hospital, and there's absolutely no guarantee that you'll get to use it um, or the midwife-led center. Uh, you can, however, guarantee the use of your pool if you have one at home. And and you can we'll go into more detail about birthing pools in a whole separate video but just know that if you really want that then these are the options that you're looking at um, really then be reassured that no matter where you are here you're going to have the equipment for um, situations where you might hemorrhage after birth, uh, the midwife can, even at, from home, administer some synthetic oxytocin, and they all come equipped with uh, bag and mask as well. Now, before we go into the whole shebang about transferring from home or midwife-led center to the hospital, I want you to consider a final point about hospitals. Now, there is obviously a higher risk of infection because it's full of sick people, and oh, there's always a superbug uh, issue that people are fighting. So consider this, in 1992 the House of Commons issued a statement, on the basis of what we have heard, this committee must draw the conclusion that the policy of encouraging all women to give birth in hospitals cannot be justified on the grounds of safety. There's even a word for this, iatrogenic being infection caused by medical intervention. So I would say on those grounds, staying at home for as long as possible, even if you do end up giving birth in the midwife center um, or the hospital, it's going to be better for you and baby. Now let's talk about another safety issue, transferring from home or the midwife-led center to hospital in case there is an emergency. A lot of you I know will think, well, I might as well just stay in hospital from the get-go that way, if there is anything, I'm in place and everything will be seen to a lot faster and everything will be identified a lot faster. But I want to challenge your thinking on that. It turns out that if you, whether you are at home or in hospital, the time it takes for you to identify a problem and getting the actual appropriate treatment is the same, whether you start from home or from the hospital. Now, how is that possible? It's for a lot of factors that we've talked about already, and especially because of the chain of events that need to take place. The problem one needs to be identified. Now at home, that's going to be straight away once the problem occurs, because you have that one-to-one -one attention. In hospital, in the midwife-led centers, you'll be seen less frequently and they'll be on, on rounds. So every 15, 20 minutes, people will check in on you, but that might be 15, 20 minutes that something hasn't been spotted yet by, um, by a professional. Then on both sides, whether you're in hospital or at home, the midwife who has identified that problem will have to call the hospital. They both call the hospital. Um, the team in the hospital will have to prepare to uh, to actually treat you and they have to prepare the room or theater or the equipment for you as well. So that's all the same. Now you're going to have to 
wait for all that to happen for that to get ready. The only difference now is that you could be waiting in the wards, uh, in in hospital, or you could just be in transit um, in the hospital towards uh, going to the hospital. And by the time you get there, everything is going to to be ready. Um, it's going to take the same amount of time. If anything, uh, they're going to be really ready for you because you're calling from outside. So they, they know it really is an emergency and they need to get you in pronto, uh, priority wise. So that kind of evens up. So birthing at home or laboring at home for as long as possible before going to hospital is also recommended so that you can remain in a familiar and comfortable sanctuary of calm, which helps your labor progress more rapidly and efficiently. You never know though, so be open-minded and remember that although you ordered in your birth plan your first, second and third choices, you should actually be preparing, be preparing yourself to be able to birth anywhere. Because women give birth stuck in elevators, in taxis, in a barn, in the middle of a field. My plan didn't go to plan, but it was the flexible planning I did in advance that made that okay, so do do this whole birth plan. I dreamed that my first birth would be in a pool in a midwife-led centre, but I actually gave birth in the hallway of my then one-bed flat, and it was still the best day of my life, thanks actually to my hypnobirthing training. My home birth wasn't my first choice, but it was an option listed on my birth plan. The plan is not just a wish list, you see, it's a tick list of everything of every eventuality that you need to prepare for and that's why we do it. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends or leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next videos in this series and all my other videos on birth preparation and pregnancy. For live discussions and more free resources, hop onto my Facebook group and I'll see you there.